Hello, Artist Academy members! I'm so excited and a little nervous for today's guest. So, Maria Brophy is going to be joining us. And if you do not know who Maria Brophy is, you're probably living under an art marketing rock. <laughs> um, I read her book twice. And so we're just going to wait for her to hop on here whenever she's ready. Um, before, we, before she hops on, I just want to let you guys know I am working on a plan for the fourth quarter of the year. So everybody knows that every artist's most profitable time of year is the fourth quarter. So um, like I said, October, November, December are the, an artist's just most profitable time. So I'm putting together a 12 week plan starting September, because you need to start early. So September, September, October, November, and to fill everybody's calendar for November and December. Um, last year I made the vast majority of my income for the year just in the fourth quarter. And this year, um, I think it'll, it was not going to be a vast majority, but it's going to be a lot just because my efforts from last year's fourth quarter spilled into January and February. And so I was really freaking busy <laughs> for the majority of the year this year because I worked my buns off last year and just really got my name out there, started an email list, like just all of those things that aren't super sexy, but that you kind of need to do as an artist. So I am creating this 12 week plan starting September 1st in the advanced group for anybody who wants to join. And after September 1st, you guys have all of August to join if you'd like to. After September 1st, I am closing down the Artist Academy advanced membership. So it, it's not going to be so it's not going to be open anymore. So I can just focus on the members inside of there and we're going to run our 12 week program. And I am so excited because your guys is, Oh, let's see. Okay. She's on here. Okay. Um, so there should be a request to join right down. It looks like, it looks like, um, if you, let's see just to make sure you're on your phone and that the auto lock is turned off. There should be a request to join right there. It looks like there's like a person with another person right next to it. And it should just be able to, I tried to request you on here, um, but it wouldn't let me, let me try again though. Let me, let's see. Yeah, it should be just like a, a box and another box with like two heads in it. And then one should be green maybe. And you just put, tap that and it says join. Uh, just type in on the comment section if you're having any problems with it. Let me refresh here so I can see. Okay. I'm pretty sure that it will let you join from your business page. Um, I'm pretty sure. So let me get in here. Let's see. I'm working on it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We always have a little bit of like technical difficulty it's uh, nobody's really done a facebook live before usually so it's you just it's, but as soon as we get you on we're good to go <laughs> hello everyone hi adam hi emily <laughs> so i'm so excited <laughs> we're just trying to get her on right now um hi andrea let's see awesome thomas <laughs> let's see um, let's see. It should have like, no, you cannot join with your desktop. It has, it's so weird. I don't know why Facebook doesn't update this. Um, but it has to be on your phone. Um, and it ha your phone has to be with auto lock off and sideways. And then it'll just get you on there. I don't know why it won't. I don't know why Facebook is like that. Let's see. Hi, Christine. Hello. Everybody's so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so what's you guys? So while we're waiting for her to get out here, so I was just saying we're having the 12 week program. Okay, let's see. Awesome. Okay, she's trying from her phone. I'm just going to kind of keep talking to try to entertain you guys until I get a request from you. Um, we're doing our 12 week program starting September 1st. Super excited about it. I'll tell you guys more about that later. I am so excited to have me and Maria Brophy on here. Um, 
if has anybody read her book i know emily has i know adam has <laughs> has anybody else read her book because if not you definitely should i'll put the link in here um it is seriously full of just so much art wisdom so much just everything i read it twice i li or i listened to it because i listen to audiobooks while i'm painting and i highly suggest everybody else do that um just because it's like two birds one stone kind of a thing and it's just it's so good it's almost just too much to take in at once so i listened to it twice and i know emily is on here she, she took notes we're just such huge fans so if you have not checked, let's see oh dang it okay let me accept your request right now i'm on my desktop accepting it here we go approve okay oh facebook we'll get it figured out i'm just excited you're taking the time out of your night to chat with us i know this group is full of either artists or aspiring artists um so this is this is your audience <laughs> i'm so excited um to see just what you have to share with us. I know we're going to talk a lot about art licensing because um, really when I think of art licensing, I think of Maria Brophy. And so there's, yeah, we're just going to get into that subject and whatever else you guys want to talk about. Um, do you think of any questions that you have for her? I don't want to take up all of her time, but I kind of do. <laughs> this is maybe like 30 minutes to maybe an hour, however much we can. So get your questions ready. Let's see. Christine, I'll buy her book right now. Perfect. Yeah, Rachel says, okay, here we go. I got your request. Oh my gosh, I'm so. <laughs> it says adding. <laughs> Let's see. Hopefully, did I do this right? Oh my yes, God. We got it. Hello. Hi. So I know what the problem was. So I, I've done this before with somebody else. And it worked fine, but I think what it was is that I was trying to join it from my page, not my personal. It didn't want me to do that. Like Facebook didn't want me to do that. Oh. So, so anyway, hi, thanks for having me. Hi. Yes, thank you so much for taking the time out of your night to come chat with us. I, you are like a celebrity in my mind. Wow. You are a legend. <laughs> oh no, we're like I'll I'll give you compliments all night and I know um some of the some of the best muralists I know in here, Emily Million and Adam, like they I told me about you. And they so they're big fans as well. So they're all here. Well, thank um, you. <laughs> yes, no problem. So so um, I have a list of questions here that I kind of have like a standard list of questions that I ask everybody, but normally we interview painters, not really art marketing people. So I'm so excited to ask you a little bit different questions. So okay. could you start maybe just telling a little, a little bit of your backstory and yeah. so anybody who doesn't know you, anybody, anybody that's living under a rock and <laughs> just tell maybe what makes up your typical work day with you and Drew. Okay. All right, so I'll start with my backstory. Um, first of all, my name is Maria Brophy, and I wear many hats, but when I'm talking to artists, I call myself an art business strategist because I do help artists to make more money with their art and make a living with their art and live a good life. And the way I got into that, I am actually a very creative person, although I don't paint very well, but I'm really creative with other things. Um, but going back 23 years, when I was in the insurance industry, I met a surfer dude named Drew Brophy, who was super cute with long bleach blonde hair, uh, or uh, sun bleached hair, and, um, and he painted surfboards for a living. And I was so fascinated by this idea that not only that he did this for a living, but he traveled around the world painting surfboards to add surf spots all over the place. And it was so cool to me that a 25 year old guy had this figured out, right? Um, and I also saw as I was hanging out with him all the time that he wasn't very great at marketing and business. And I saw that if he had a little bit of help that he could do so much more, right? That he had, the potential was really great. And so I started helping him while I worked my full-time job, 
Then we got married and we had a child and he kept trying to get me to quit my job. But honestly, it was terrifying because I love the security of the paycheck and the health insurance and, you know, all the stuff that comes along with knowing how much money you're going to make every month. Um, but I also, I, I, I straddled this fence of like wanting to leave that corporate job and work in art full time, but it was a scary thing. So what I did was I start, I cut my hours back at my job. And I, for a year, I did half and half. And then finally, one day, I just jumped off that cliff. And I said, we're going to figure this out. Um, so, so I quit my job, started working with Drew full time. And the problem was, we had to figure out how to make his income as an artist cover the income that I just gave up. And that was tricky because we didn't really... Uh, you know, we didn't know how to make that giant leap, um, but we did. You know, we had to. We had to figure it out because I left my job. We were like, we burned all the bridges <laughs> behind us. There was no going back. Um, and so we just figured stuff out through trial and error and being persistent. We learned a lot of hard lessons along the way. We figured out some stuff. And that was how I started helping artists because artists started coming to me for advice. And I started writing a blog to help them. And then next thing you know, that led me into doing consulting. And, and then I wrote a book, my, my book here. I'll show you my book. Um, so that's my backstory. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. And if anybody has not read her book yet, I'll put a link in here. You can definitely, definitely get it. Yeah. So that, yeah, you can, was... it's on Amazon. So just go to amazon.com. Awesome. Very cool. So now that you, you took, you took the leap and that's such an amazing story. Cause I, I think a lot of aspiring artists in this group have that same fear. You're like, Oh no, like if I'm going to make this happen, like we, I mean, it's just, it's a lot. And so I think a lot of people can relate to that, but you guys have really done amazing for yourself. I think that's just so amazing. So what makes up a typical work day for you and Drew or just you like nowadays? Like what is life with Maria nowadays? Well, my, there is no typical day because literally <laughs> every day is different, which I love because I get bored so quickly. It needs to be different every day. Um, but my day usually starts the same. I really value that first hour of my day where I use that, you know, I've heard people call the first hour of the day is your hour of power, but I use that first hour to really get my head straight to daydream a little bit while I'm still waking up. And I always write in a journal every morning and sometimes I'm writing about something that bothers me, right? Like if I'm upset about something, but usually I'm writing out dreams. Um, I'm writing out what I want to happen next, you know, the next big thing. And then sometimes I'm working out a problem. So this, uh, so, so for example, if I'm trying to figure out how to make something happen, like I, um, like, like there've been times where uh, we have a series of art and we're like, okay, how are we going to say, we have like these 12 paintings and we really want to sell these. What's the most effective, efficient and creative way to do it. And so I'll sit there with my journal and I'll just write out, well, this is what I want to happen. I want to sell all these paintings. This is how much money I want to make. This is the, type of person I want to appreciate the artwork. Um, and then I'll write down the question, where's the best way, how, what's the best way and where's the best place to sell these paintings? And that is where I come up with some really out of the box ideas. Um, now, uh, and, and so that's how I like to start my day is just thinking about the things that I want to make happen and coming up with new ways to do it. Um, and then I usually do whatever is the hardest thing. I try to do that first thing in the morning. And for me, it's writing stuff like writing a description for the, for a web page, 
or a description or writing an email to a, po a potential client or calling a potential <laughs> client because even though I've been doing this all these years, I still hate that. You know, you never, I don't, I don't love like calling, like I still get nervous. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. It's almost comforting to know that you get nervous. You're so experienced with it too. Man. I know. Okay. I know. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. A lot of the, so I listen to podcasts quite a bit and a lot of people do a similar practice like you do in the morning. I've been, I've been toying with the, the, the idea of taking this on of just like, it's kind of like a morning meditation sort of a thing, mm -hmm. just like getting your mind yeah. right. And totally. okay, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna start doing it. And I'm gonna let you guys know how it goes. But yeah. Well, I've been doing this for quite a few years. Well, I've always oh. kept a journal. I mean, even when I was a little girl, I kept diaries. So I've always done that. And it's really fun. What I love about it is you can go back to what you wrote even six months ago. And you will be blown away by the things that you wrote down that you wanted came to fruition. And I mean, sometimes, and so I'll write, I'll go to Staples, right? Uh, you know, the, the store Staples. Yeah. These are $2. I will buy 10 of these at a time. I fill these up. I fill up like, I don't know, six of them a year, maybe more wow. um, with just my journal. And I'll write my name on the front and then the date it started, the date it ended. And and I'll write down like some day and some days I'll write down things I hate about my house and I want to change. And like, I, and it's so funny because just yesterday I found this list that I wrote like a year ago. I want a new ceiling in my kitchen because my kitchen ceiling had a problem with it. And I want to paint my living room a pretty blue color. And I want like, you know, all these things, like, and some of them were little and some of them were big. Um, and I looked at, the, I came across that list yesterday and I saw that almost everything on that list eventually happened. And it's not like I was checking them off the list because it was in a book put away on a shelf, you know, mm -hmm. but it's when you write things down, it's almost like you're putting it in a program in the computer part of your brain, right? And your brain, while you're sleeping and while you're doing whatever, um, your brain is working out how to solve these problems that you decided you want to solve. Your brain yeah. does work for you without you even consciously thinking about it. Very cool. The, the psychology behind that all is just so cool. And it even I'm sure it gives you like a, a confidence hit every time you're like, look how much I've accomplished. Oh, man. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's fun because, you know, we, I'm such a high achiever. Like I get disappointed in myself and I'll, and yeah. I'll, I'll say something to Drew, like, God, I feel like I haven't done anything important this year. Like, I feel like I, I don't even know what I've done. I'll say that to him and he'll say, what are you talking about? You did this, you did this, you did this, you did this. And then I'll say, oh yeah, you're right. Like we have to recognize, we have to recognize the things that we have done and we have to appreciate the work that we've done, big or little. Um, I, um, so uh, th this was kind of interesting. Every year we go to this festival called the Ohana Festival. And it's a big music festival that Eddie Vedder of Pearl Jam has put on. And we got involved with it a few years ago. Um, this was really cool. But Eddie Vedder actually had his manager call Drew to do the artwork for the first poster for the advertisement, which we were so excited about because, you know, we're big fans of his. And, um, and this event only takes place six miles from our house on the beach. So he hired Drew to do that. And then we got involved with the promoters of this event. Um, and so the last few years, they've had us come and had Drew do like live paintings. And, and in exchange, we would get like a bunch of VIP, VIP tickets for our friends, which is really fun. Um, so they'd give us a bunch of VIP tickets, but we didn't get, uh, he got paid to do that poster, but like the last couple of years, we didn't get paid 
to do the live event. It was more like they just hooked us up with these VIP tickets, which was a lot. Um, but this year, like just, just um, a couple weeks ago, I told Drew, I said, I really want us to do something Ohana Fest this year, but this time I want to get paid really well for it. And I think the only way to get paid for it is if we get a sponsor that's exhibiting at the event to hire you to make them look good at the event, to do something cool, like paint a surfboard with their logo on it and like, you know, whatever. I was coming up with all these ideas. And it's so amazing how you just come up with an idea and you don't know exactly what it's gonna look like. Well, just today, I got a hold of one of the sponsors there. It's a liquor company and they are on board with hiring Drew to, to do this thing. So now, He's going to go there. He's going to paint a surfboard. He's going to get paid really well to do it. And we're going to get tickets to go to the concert. Um, but we're going to get paid to be there too, which is going to be really cool. So that all came from like writing down an idea in a book and saying, hmm, how can we make this happen? Yeah. What mic drop on that. <laughs> like, that is insane. That, yeah. That's amazing. You're taking something that's already going well and you're like, how can I make this better? That's amazing. Yeah. He is so lucky to have you manage him. Um, Emily and I, who we paint with, who you've met, uh, uh, Emily Million from Missouri. Um, and she, we, all the time, we're like, we, we need a Maria Brophy. Because <laughs> like, well, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. But you know, you can do this yourself. Yeah. I, so I, I have so many artists who read my book, like I'm trying to point to it, like who <laughs> read, my, I'm like, because I'm looking <laughs> at my screen and it doesn't, it's like a mirror. Anyway, I've got, I get so many artists who read my book and read, I share a lot of these ideas in my book and they actually take action on these ideas, come up with their own ideas with my prompts and make some really cool things happen. So you don't need a Maria to do it for mm -hmm. you. Now that you know that it can be done, you just, you just need to take that creative energy that you have to create art and use that to create, um, to create deals, collaborations with companies and organizations that have the money and the resources to make it happen for you. For sure. Definitely. Um, Adam Wilkin has a comment on here. He goes, shout out to you. By, by the way, Maria, I landed a huge church project utilizing an edited version of your pricing rubric on contract form and contract form from your blog. Thanks so much. Yay. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, so moving on to our second question on here, um, what is your number one source for new projects? Is it mostly referrals? Is it um, like, ad do you do advertising, past customers? What? I, don't, I, I almost never advertise. Um, and, and I'm going to start actually, um, but I, I, we don't advertise. So the best source for us, uh, two, um, one is, um, uh, reputation so that comes from um somebody knowing about what drew does and uh they've either heard about it from someone else so that's kind of like a referral um but really it just comes from consistency and posting stuff on instagram and having a website that even though drew's website isn't perfect it, i want to redo the whole thing it still clearly uh communicates what he does um and so we get people that land on the website like a lot of our big uh, corporate clients come from either somebody that we already know have done business with met at a networking thing or met somehow in person by some chance um or we got lucky and they typed in keywords and landed on the website. That, that's where most of it comes from. Um, we recently did a thing with Uber in San Francisco. And that was like, one of Drew's good friends 
wife works at Uber. She put a word in to her boss and said, hey, I think we should have Drew Brophy come here and paint with us and like do a, do a team building thing. And so that's how we got that deal. Um, sometimes it's, I like to stress that you really need to get out and talk to people. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of us don't want to do that. I mean, I'm guilty of that too. Like I'd rather hide away, you know, in my office and not get out. But I know that every time that I go out to some kind of event and I make an effort to meet people, introduce myself to people, give business cards out, that I do get a benefit from that. I mean, it does come back, not, not always right away. Sometimes it comes back a year later, but it does, it does come back. And um, the other thing is when you do meet somebody, ask them a lot of questions, ask them questions like what's important to you? What's important to your company? What are some challenges that you guys have? And while they're talking, look for ways that your art or your services can help them and then plant the seed in their mind and say, Hey, I think I might have a solution. Um, okay. and, and that's where you have to get creative and, and make stuff up in your mind. Like just make up opportunities. Yeah, for sure. Um, Adam Wilkin asked, do you pay for your referrals? Um, do I pay people who refer me? Yes. I think that's uh, what Or asking. refer. Um, or like incentivize. I have not. I would. I, I haven't really. Like if I had, uh, the, I think the, the time you pay for referrals, and I really haven't had this happen, is if you have like a professional broker, like an art broker, an interior decorator, somebody that refers you to one of their clients and you do the deal directly, always give them like a 20% fee or 10% fee, depending on how much money is in the deal. Um, but I really haven't been in that situation. Um, if I had, uh, because most of the referrals are like, um, uh, yeah, it's not like that. I don't know. But I would. And I, and I highly recommend it if you've got a professional referring you to their direct client. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, next question. Are there any business lessons you've learned the hard way? Yes. Lots. <laughs> okay. Maybe tell us a good one. <laughs> okay. All right. Here's a really good one. Um, when you have somebody that's interested in buying your art, and they say, oh, I love this piece of art right here. And they're asking you questions about it. Never, ever, ever say, oh, if you think that one's good, come look at this one. Don't do that. Don't show them anything else. Sell them what they fell in love with. Because if you give them another option, most likely you're going to lose the sale altogether. Because now they get confused. Now they can't make up their mind. Just never divert the sale and artists do this all the time. And I think some of it is because they're nervous mm -hmm. and they, they're like avoiding closing the sale. So they lose it. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing is follow up quickly. Don't wait. If you, if you get an email or a phone call or text from somebody interested in you painting a mural or commissioning your work, and you don't answer within an hour, you've lost it. You have oh, less an hour. Wow. Yep. One hour. So pay attention. Oh. I mean, answer if, if, if six hours went by and you just saw it, answer right yeah. away. Um, don't say, oh, I lost it. But really, you need to jump on it ASAP. I always answer mm -hmm. my phone, even though more than 50% of the time it's somebody trying to sell me something. Um, yeah. Actually, it's probably 70% of the time somebody's trying to sell me something. But I answer my phone every single time it rings because every time it rings, it could be a sale. And I'm not going to miss that sale. 
Very good. Yeah, I need I need to take on that habit that you have right there. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Um, so kind of segmenting into what you're really known for art licensing. So in my mind, you are the go to person for art licensing. I think of art licensing, I think of Maria Brophy. Um, can you talk a little bit about art, art licensing? I know it's such a big topic, but just kind of like, uh, we have a lot of aspiring artists in here, uh, just to kind of brief them on like, why you shouldn't give up your copyright and just all of your expertise. <laughs> okay, sure. So let me first explain art what licensing means is that you are giving someone temporary rights to use your art on their products. And um, while they're using your art on their products, a good licensing agreement will allow you to use that same art on somebody else's products for a different type of product. And that is how you can make money off of one image again and again and again. And uh, so for example, this isn't Drew's art. I don't know whose art this is. Uh, I can't read the, the signature, but this is somebody's art, right? Um, they licensed this art to whoever makes this glassware. And they either got paid a flat fee or they're getting paid royalties, which means they get a percentage of everything that sells. Now this artist could also license this art to a totally different company that's selling t-shirts and they could make money off of the t-shirts and then they can sell it on art prints and wall art and all kinds of stuff. Um, it's a really, a real clever way to make money with your art. Now, um, a lot of artists are licensing their art without even knowing it. For example, um, if somebody calls you up and says, hey, I love your art. I want to print it on my t-shirts and I want to sell them. Um, and you give them the high res image. That's a licensing deal. Um, whether or not you have an official contract, that's what that is. And until something's in writing that says um, you give them all the rights, if, if you don't sign something that says you're giving them all the rights and they keep the rights forever, um, that art belongs to you. I hope I explained that right. I don't know. It's, yeah. you know. Sometimes it's hard to explain it, but I love licensing because if you have an image that you created that's like a home run, that is like your hit song, yeah. Um, you can make so much money. We have a couple images that Drew did. Um, one was in 2006, a painting that he did in 2006, and another one he did in 1999. And each of those paintings, we've licensed them, and they've sold so well on so many different products. Each of them has made over $250,000 each. Two paintings. Wow. And... <clears throat> So, um, and one of the paintings, let's see, one of them was a commissioned painting. Um, so a collector commissioned the painting and we make sure the collectors understand that Drew keeps all copyrights and all reproduction rights to the painting. Um, all they get to own is the actual painting that they can hang on a wall. And his customers are okay with this. Like they, they know that that's what he does with his art and they're okay with it. And, and the reason I mentioned that is that's the question a lot of artists ask. Well, aren't your collectors going to be mad if they spent $4,000 on a painting and then they see that art on a boogie board on the beach or a t-shirt and um, Drew's collectors are happy about it because that's part of his business model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's like they have the original, so it's almost like more valuable kind of the it's, thing. And that's what I tell them. That's exactly what I tell anybody that raises a question about it. I say, look, you're the only person in the world who will ever own the original. And so by putting this art on other products, because it's popular, that piece of art is much more valuable for you as the owner. For sure. Okay. So um, 
So if some, if an artist basically created a painting and so they automatically own that copyright unless they sign it away, correct? I just want to make sure that that's... Yep. Yeah, so in the U.S., in the United States, the law is that a piece of art that you create, as long as you're not creating it for an employer, you have to be creating it for yourself um, or a client, even if you create it for a client, as long as you didn't sign your rights away in a written agreement, you own the rights, the copyrights and reproduction rights to that artwork. Awesome. Okay. I just wanted to make sure and make it yep. super clear. Thanks for touching on that. And if yeah. you guys want to know more about licensing, check out her book because she talks, I mean, there's a whole chapter or two or more in yep. there all about it. Uh, and are you, are you creating another book on art licensing or have you? I am working on a book. So, okay. so this book, Art Money Success is, it just talks about licensing a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, art, it's like an overall business model for artists but the licensing book is just only going to be about licensing and, and believe me it's like there's so much information I could put in that licensing book and I'm trying to keep it simple yeah. um, but it's going to be a while before it's out because I haven't put myself on a deadline with it yet um, yeah. so I've been really taking my time with it so I don't it'll probably be spring next year when that book's out yeah Definitely. Okay. Um, Kayla has a question. This is kind of an interesting question. Does it apply to portraits as well? Like if say I painted a portrait of you? <laughs> well, um, two things to answer that. First of all, if you're painting portraits, you want to honor your client and get their permission if you were going to sell it. But the second thing is nobody's going to want to buy a portrait of someone else. Sure. I mean, unless it's a famous person, there are some laws about selling the likeness of famous people. And mm -hmm. I don't know the ins and outs of those laws. So that would be a question for an attorney. I don't know. You could be, you know, if you did, and there's a lot of artists doing this where they're doing portraits of like Johnny Depp and like famous musicians. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know that anybody's shutting them down, but if one of those famous people wanted to, they probably could. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, there's so much legal stuff in that. Um, yeah. Emily, Emily says, can't wait to, to, can't wait for the new book. And then Kayla, actually, the one who, asked, who commented, she had commented a second ago, and she was like, she heard your voice, and she was like, wait, I, I know who that is because she's listening to your <laughs> audio book. <laughs> oh, cool. Good. Yes. That's right. Yeah. My book is out on audio. Yes. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite past project? Is there a project that you and Drew that has stood out above the others? Uh, there's been a lot of really, really fun ones. I love doing projects that involve musicians because, um, because it's just fun, you know, to meet these people and realize that they're just normal people like us. You know, you're like all starstruck. <laughs> Drew got hired to do the album cover for Sublime with Rome a few years ago. And that was really exciting because what was the whole thing about that was fun because I was hiking and backpacking, living out of a tent for five days on Catalina Island <laughs> with almost no self service. But I got to this one area where my phone rang. And here I am with this 40 pound backpack on my back. And I'm with my, I'm with my bestie, Claire, and she's like, you're not going to answer that, are you? And I go, yeah, I'm going to answer it. <laughs> so I answered my phone and it was the manager for Sublime with Rome. And he said, um, we want Drew to create this piece of art, but we've got this crazy deadline of 10 days. Can he make it happen? I'm like, yeah, he'll make it happen. So yeah. it had a really fast turnaround. <laughs> And they, you know, the thing about working with these big famous bands, they grind you on price. And I was like, you know what, you guys, we need to work this out because what you're asking for is a lot. Um, I did eventually, you know, get them to agree to a certain price that I was happy with, but I also made them agree to have all the band members sign 100 limited edition prints of the artwork 
that mm. I was having printed and that I was going to sell. And they agreed to it. So we had to go spend the day with the band during practice at one of their recording studios. And it was really fun. Um, and we brought our teenage kids with us. And of course, there was a lot of pot being smoked in the room. And like, it was, <laughs> I, I told my kids, don't breathe anything. Don't breathe the air. <laughs> yes. um, but it, it was a fun experience. And then we, of course, got VIP and backstage passes. So it, it was our kids' first ever concert. And it, it was, and then, and then the most amazing thing is funny. I just posted this on my Instagram uh, the other day. Might have been today, actually, where we're watching the concert and we didn't even know that they had the artwork printed on a giant 40 foot by 40 foot backdrop on the stage. So Drew's art was the entire backdrop and it was massively huge. And so that was really rewarding and exciting. That was fun. Definitely. That is so amazing. It's just, it's like, uh, it's, what, what can happen when you've been, when you stick with it, you've been doing it for so long, you put yourself out there, you brand really well, you yeah. attract those kind of customers. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys are pa parents of the year to your kids. <laughs> Our kids were pretty happy. <laughs> they, they were like, God, mom, I can't believe everybody's smoking pot at the concert. Like every single, I just said, just don't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> hold your nose <laughs> that's hilarious um <laughs> are there any upcoming projects that you're excited about so i mean that was a pretty exciting one <laughs> that was good um yeah i am okay not not it's not as you know wild and crazy as that one but yeah i'm really excited drew and i are putting together or, or we're building and we have built a Brophy Art Academy, and it's and it's an online academy where I am sharing business courses, courses on the stuff I'm teaching in my book, um, but really going in. And I just taught my first course, how to have a successful art exhibit, and that's over now. But I'm going to reopen it. Um, I haven't set the date yet. Probably in a couple months. And then Drew is teaching how to paint with Posca classes. So we have some of those courses online right now. And I'm really excited about it because honestly, for years, I have been um, rejecting the idea of being a teacher. And Drew has been rejecting the idea of being a teacher. And we've had people asking us for years to show them, like Drew always get out, gets asked, you know, his techniques. And it's yeah. not just his painting techniques, but his, if he's highly efficient and highly uh, uh, organized. And mm -hmm. those skills have really served him well as a professional artist. And then, you know, all the things that I talk about in my book, how to do deals with people, how to sell, how to, um, how to protect yourself, how to, how to talk to people, you know, yeah. how to, and, but, but I, I've been rejected. It's just like saying, no, I don't, I'm not a teacher. I'm not a teacher. And Drew's been doing that. And finally this year we said, you know what, we need to go with the flow of what people are asking for. Yeah. Because we have this like community of artists that we love to be with because we do we thrive like what we're talking about right now like I thrive on this stuff I don't know why I think I think I had it in my head all these years well if you know we if we're teaching then we're not selling and creating art yeah and then I realized we can do both we can just you know we can do both and we're good at both so why not so I'm really yeah. excited about Brophy Art Academy, and if anybody wants to see what we've got up there right now, we only have a couple classes up there right now. Um, it's brophyartacademy.com. Um, 
and I'll put a link here so you guys can just yeah, click on it. Thanks. Trophy Thank art account. Of course. Yeah. So are these are these like classes that you go on and you can download? Or are they live or what are they? Um, we actually have a live class happening here in our gallery on August 17th. We have a couple spots left for that. It's a um, uh, surfboard painting class. So it's very specific. Um, and we, we do have classes here only a few times a year. Um, but I want to have more. And we do have online courses. And then the thing I'm really excited about is our box. We have a Posca paint pen kit. And you know what? I'm going to take you over here because I happen to have one in my office. Let me see. This is an empty one. Oh, this one's, this one's actually, I don't have the stuff in this one. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can show you. Okay. So this is a collectible kit and it has, um, this particular box doesn't have anything in it. Um, all the ones that have stuff in it are in the other room, but it comes cool. with Posca paint pens and a how to paint. Uh, it comes with the online course. The online course is free when you buy this. So people will see that too. Yeah. Um, that's when amazing. they go to Brophy Art Academy. So I'm, okay. I'm really excited about that. We've been developing that for the last few months and it's been a, a lot of work. Yeah, I bet <laughs> as is anything new. Um, so yeah. are those available right now? They are available are they? right now. So $99, it include, they were $175 with the course. And we mm -hmm. just today temporarily lowered the price to $99. So basically the kit's $99. You get the course for free with it. Okay, well, I'm going to purchase that. <laughs> I'm just going to do that. Yay! Yes. Awesome. <laughs> um, I've been watching it. So is that with his markers? Is that what that is? Yeah. Yeah, and the markers, okay, they cool. actually have a, um, it's water-based paint pens. They last a really long time, and they've got a very easy learning curve, and the colors do blend. That's a question people always ask. They're very blendable, and Drew shows you how to do it in the online course. Awesome. I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do that. Um, okay, great. I, I was about to be like, I'm going to ask for it for Christmas. And I was like, I'm just going to get it right now. Um, <laughs> are there <laughs> our last question on here? Um, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I really appreciate you coming on here. Um, is there any advice that you would give to artists who want to make art their full time career, but just don't know where to start? Like we have a lot of aspiring artists in the group, like where's a good starting point? Oh. to do that um you really need to show that you can get used to talking about it um so you can get better at describing it can you hear me now can you hear me now uh, it's Is just that... like cutting in that yep now now we're good oh Okay. I wonder if it's my headphones. I hope oh, not. Yeah. I'm moving around a lot. Sorry. Um, so showing your work live is really important. And yeah. Oh. For some reason, it's... Um... Am I still cutting out? I don't know what's, I don't know what's going on. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. No, you're sorry. Yeah, Sometimes it's, this it's, time it's, of day, the Wi-Fi Wi -Fi is so unpredictable. Um, now, you're now you're good, though. <laughs> so sh show your work. Okay. So show your work <laughs> live. Find a way to exhibit your work. Get somebody to host it for you. The other thing is I want you, and this is the most important thing. The most important thing is to think of your art business like a business. Yes. <laughs> yes. If you think of it like a business, you will, ma you will make sure that you have an income, that you, that you have cash flow, and that everything you do has a profit. Don't do anything for free, not unless you are still in high school or college. Mm -hmm. Don't do 
anything for free. Even if you get paid a little bit, it's better than doing it for free. Um, that is where artists fail, is they fail to ask, they fail to think of themselves like a business. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. And it's like the, the business part isn't always the fun part, but it's such a ne unnecessary part. If you guys are it's confused about how to treat your art like a business, buy her book, listen to her book. So, um, yeah, I, I go into detail into that in the book. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All righty. Well, that is it for tonight. Thank you again so much for taking the time out of your night to come chat with you. us. Thank you. You have you've inspired so many artists, and um, this will be in podcast form in a week, and I'll send you the link and everything. And it was so nice awesome. to virtually meet you. Thank you so much. This was really fun. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Good. All right. Have a good have one. A, have a good night. Okay. Bye.